good day. To begin, the Rome Statute is the treaty that established the International Criminal Court. The rationale, or the overall object and purpose of the Rome Statute, is to ensure that those responsible for the worst possible crimes are brought to justice in all cases, primarily by states, but under the underlying principle of complementarity if they prove unable or unwilling to do so by the International Criminal Court as a last resort. But before we can go to the statute itself, let's look at its historical background. In 1948, the UN General Assembly adopted the Convention of the Crime of Genocide. In June 1989, motivated in part by an effort to combat drug trafficking, the states of Trinidad and Tobago resurrected a pre-existing proposal for the dissolution of an ICC. In 1994, the International Law Commission presented its final version of a draft statute for an ICC. The UN General Assembly created the Preparatory Committee on the Establishment of the ICC to prepare a consolidated draft text. From 1996 to 1998, six sessions of the UN Preparatory Committee were held. The Rome Conference took place from June 15 to July 17, 1998 in Rome, Italy, with 160 countries participating in the negotiations. At the end of five weeks of intense negotiations, 120 nations voted in favor of the adoption of the Rome Statute of the ICC, with seven nations voting against the treaty and 20 and 21 nations abstaining. The Rome Statute finally entered into force on July 1, 2002. Who are then the signatories of the statute? Well, there are a total of 123 state parties to the Rome Statute, including the Philippines. However, some 40 countries never signed the treaty, including the states of China, Ethiopia, India, Indonesia, Iraq, North Korea, Saudi Arabia, and Turkey. Several dozen others signed the statute, but their legislatures never ratified it. This include the states of Egypt, Iran, Israel, Russia, Sudan, Syria, and lastly, the United States. However, it should be noted that at the time of this writing, the Philippines effectively withdrew from the International Criminal Court on March 17, 2019. The pertinent provisions of the statute begins by discussing what crimes are within the coverage of the ICC's jurisdiction, which is laid down under Article 5. Thereafter, Articles 6 to 8 expounds more on the aforementioned crimes individually. To read, Article 5 states that the jurisdiction of the court shall be limited to the most serious crimes of concern to the international community as a whole. The court has jurisdiction in accordance with the statute with respect to the following crimes. First, crime of genocide. Second, crimes against humanity. Third, war crimes. And fourth, the crime of aggression. The court shall exercise jurisdiction over the crime of aggression once a provision is adopted in accordance with Articles 121 and 123 defining the crime and setting out the conditions under which the court shall exercise its jurisdiction with respect to this crime. Such a provision shall be consistent with the relevant provisions of the Charter of the United Nations. As to how the ICC acquires jurisdiction over such, it is manifested under Article 4 which tells us that the court is competent to hear a case when first, the country where the offense was committed is a party to the Rome Statute or second, the perpetrator's country of origin is a party to the Rome Statute. Hence, Article 4 reads, The court shall have international legal personality. It shall also have such legal capacity as may be necessary for the exercise of its functions and the fulfillment of its purposes. The court may exercise its functions and powers as provided in the statute on the territory of any state party and by special agreement on the territory of any other state. Additionally, the ICC may only exercise its jurisdiction if the national court is unable or unwilling to do so. The ICC only has jurisdiction over offenses committed after the statute's entry into force on July 1, 2002. Lastly, under Articles 13 to 16, to refer a case to the ICC, it must be done by either, first, any state party to the Rome Statute irrespective of any involvement in the alleged crime, or second, 
the ICC Prosecutor, or third, the United Nations Security Council. Hence, Article 13 reads, The court may exercise its jurisdiction with respect to a crime referred to in Article 5 in accordance with the provisions of this statute if, first, a situation in which one or more of such crimes appears to have been committed is referred to the prosecutor by a state party in accordance with Article 14, or second, a situation in which one or more of such crimes appears to have been committed is referred to the prosecutor by the Security Council acting under Chapter 7 of the Charter of the United Nations. Or third, the prosecutor has initiated an investigation in respect of such crime in accordance with Article 15. Here are the impacts of the ICC in the international community. First and most fundamental, the ICC is bringing people to justice for crimes within its jurisdiction. A successful record of investigations help end impunity and contribute to prevention of genocide, war crimes, and crimes against humanity. Second, the ICC is also having a positive impact by helping to catalyze domestic legal action in pursuit of justice and accountability for atrocity crimes by giving primacy to genuine national processes. Third, the ICC is helping to empower civil society justice advocates. ICC brings together governments as well as a large, diverse network of civil society organizations and justice advocates from around the world. What are the other criticisms of the ICC? Criticisms generally come from two directions. One, some believe that the court has too little authority, making it inefficient and ineffective at putting away war criminals. Because decisions of the ICC is not enforceable, others think it has too much prosecutorial power, threatening state sovereignty, and that it lacks due process and other checks against political bias.